Morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday, October 11th, 2024. Hope you're safe and healthy today. Happy Friday. Hope your family's safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who are out here every day trying to save lives. Those also that pick up garbage, keep our places clean, and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover. Teenagers and children that are victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of pornography and child pornography, prostitution, child prostitution, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators, the profiteers, and those perverts that create the demand for these industries. Finally, double blessings upon the homeless. More than 600,000 men, women, children, families, senior citizens, veterans, homeless in the United States of America, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. Today I want to talk about Juju, because he's going to be coming to Madison Square Garden on Sunday, and he's going to have to be feeling some kind of way. But before I do that, I've been having a lot of back and forth with some of you knuckleheads, the ones that cause us to be called delusional, about Tyler Kolick, and I'm tired of it, and I'm tired of y'all. So I got yesterday... I was listening to a podcast with Paul George, and he interviewed Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward, you know, all-star player, um, you know, played with the Celtics, played with Hornets, and of course, started his career at Utah. He explains very well, better than I could to some of y'all, why Tyler Kolick ain't going to play this year, (laughs) which I keep trying to tell y'all. But let me let you listen to Gordon Hayward. For just a minute. I'm going to put this link in the description box, too, so you can find it for yourself. But this is why Tyler Cole ain't playing. Star point guard. Face of the franchise. Both gone within a week. Yeah. So (laughs) with with that said, how did you feel from going from not playing, your boy getting up out of here, and now you starting? Oh, I was loving it. (laughs) Loving it. like, loving it. Yeah, I mean, it could have been better for me. Right. Yeah. You like, I love you. I went, you know, you, uh, yeah, I went from not playing at all to now I'm actually in the rotation a little bit. And um, I mean, it's, I think it's I always tell people the hardest part about, and I don't know how you feel, but the hardest part when you go from playing in college to being in the NBA for, I would say, 98% of people is you're not playing mm-hmm. at all. And you got to sit there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's no, there's really no, a lot of times there's not even an explanation of why you're not playing. It's just, I'm not going with you because you're a rookie. You don't have the experience. I mean, Coach Sloan said to me one time, I I think he threw me in and I didn't play the whole first half, didn't play the whole third quarter. And then he threw me in the game. It was against Minnesota in uh, the fourth quarter, just threw me in the game. And I went in there and played really well. I think I had 10 points. We won the game. And the next day at practice, he was like, you know, you played really well yesterday. I'm not going to play you moving forward here. (laughs) You just don't have the experience and I'm thinking in my to my head, like, well, I can't get experience unless right. I play. Right. Unless you play. Right. And so that that's the hardest part when you come into the NBA is just having to wait your turn. I would say for, like I said, 98% of people always mm-hmm. need, like, everybody goes through it. Mm-hmm. And- 98% of players have to, what, what? Wait their turn. Wait their turn. Wait their turn. Turn, man. Some of y'all, and then some of y'all try to act like you know you swamis. In the future, this year, Tibbs is going to play Kolick in the rotation. Tibbs is going to make him the backup point guard this year. Will y'all listen to? Y'all ain't listening to me. Will you listen to Gordon Hayward? Gotta wait your turn. And I ain't talking about it no more after today, but I want to tell you, if you want to see how Kolick is going to come along, and some of you, you just don't like him. Oh, my God. This ain't high school. This is the league, man. This is the league. It ain't about liking him. Matter of fact, I don't even know him. I think he's a talented player. But let me tell you something. Look at the path Deuce McBride took to get to where he is now in the rotation. Look at the path he took. Because guess what? That's the exact colic path. 
And then I caught it yesterday, finally. All of these, this one dude, couple dude kept coming at me. Deuce is not a point guard. As if this means something. Deuce is not a point guard for you. I don't care what you think about him being a point guard. He's going to back up and does and will back up Brunson at the point guard and back up the two guard. He's going to play both positions. Campaign going to be in there too. But campaign ain't getting the minutes Deuce is getting because Deuce is playing both positions. Why? Guess what? He waited his turn. Some of y'all just ain't catching that. And that's the thing. What's frustrating about it is not only do some of you just purposely, willfully, ignorantly ignore everything I just told you. He's got to go through this path. He's a rookie. He's playing on a team that's looking for a chip. And just like Gordon Hayward just said, 98% of rookies don't play, even if they are good. So this is that that was Jerry Sloan. If you don't understand that. Tom Thibodeau and Jerry Sloan from the same cloth. Come on now. So, no, nah, that ain't going to happen. I've been trying to tell y'all. But anyway, I don't want to hear no more about this rookie. He ain't playing. <laughs> anyway, Juju ain't no rookie. Juju is going to be coming back to the garden. I hope they give Juju a big ovation when he comes back on Sunday. Um, he was here. Uh, he was the first dude that the Knicks had in a long time that came and when they was losing 17 games and not only that with the, with the arrival of Tom Thibodeau in his, in Juju's second year here in New York, he becomes all NBA and all star. He's a guy that was really, um, he had been drafted in the uh, lottery by the Lakers, but the Lakers let him go to New Orleans for a mid-level exception, he comes out of one year New Orleans and gets a $63 million deal with the third year as a team option for the Knicks. And he comes and, and, and then they go get Tom Thibodeau. Rest is history. Three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA. Does he have flaws in his game? Some of y'all drive me crazy with that crap, man. Do everybody got flaws in the game. You got flaws in your game. But... Juju's all NBA and an all star. It's like somebody was like, Thibodeau can still improve. That's like when you're the coach of the year in the NBA, you done some. Thibodeau's been coach of the year with two different teams in the league twice. Okay? And he's a candidate to do it again this year. That's like telling the MVP you can get better, you need to improve. I'm not saying MVPs can improve, but what kind of. What kind, and Juju is all NBA and all star. Does he have flaws in his game? Yes. But like I said, so do you. Every player does. The thing is, is he going to make Minnesota better? The answer is yes. They're going to play better. Not that he's better or worse than Cat. Cat is a better fit in New York than Juju. I think Juju is a better fit in Minnesota with Gobert next to him. Gobert doesn't demand the basketball. Juju does. Um, he's got Ant with him. He knows his Ant's team going in. Okay. And then you got Jaden McDaniels, a young up and coming piece that's going to respect Juju because Juju's a, he's a senior, you know, he's a senior dude now. He's going to be, he's 30 years old. He's a senior dude now. So, He's going to get the respect he wants. Juju has matured as a player so that, yes, he still has some bad habits, but he's learned. He's learned under Tom Thibodeau. And now he may not be all NBA in the West at the power forward spot. He may not. But I still think he can be an all-star in the West. I still think he can. So he's going to come back and he's going to be feeling some kind of way. There was an interview that they did with him in Minnesota. I didn't, I didn't have that one, but where they were asking him about the trade and how he felt. And one of the first things he says, which is common, if you've heard players get drafted, uh, get traded like this, especially players that are of his status, that he said, it's good to be wanted. Uh, every player, it's like if you ever got dropped by a girl, you like the girl and, uh, and, and you got dropped, or you're a girl and you got dropped by a dude. No matter how good looking, no matter how much you got going for you, you still feel some kind of way because you just got dropped. And he and players feel like, oh, they didn't want me no more. No matter what they say, he let that know and he says, good to be wanted, you know, by Minnesota. That's, you know, no matter how good you are, you're going to feel like that. It's good to be wanted by a team. 
Okay, so I hope that the Knicks fan, Knicks Nation, give him a big ovation when he comes back to the Garden. He gets introduced. He deserves that. Um, and the whole things, that, you know, with the different issues, our uh, problem child we had with him, that's all part of the family. That's just part of his growth. And so um, don't, you know, some people will, you know, they got issues where they'll hold the thumbs down thing against him for the rest of his life, like as if he committed murder or something. No, it's part of the growth, part of dealing with us, you know. So I just, you know, I, I know he's going to be feeling some kind of way. I just guess I'm saying let's give him that support. We don't, we want to beat him, obviously. He's playing for the opposition, but this is preseason. He's, it's not, it doesn't count. Really, it's going to be on when we go to Minnesota uh, and play them in December. You know, and again, I'm going to be at that game, but it's going to be on at that point because that's when it counts. This game is really preseason. Tibbs is going to play his starters, you know, a limited amount of minutes. He's going to want Cat to get, unre- you know, untracked again. Uh, Brunson's already playing like his, like his regular season. He's ready. Uh, Brunson's ready. But the rest of the guys got to get untracked a little bit. You're going to see more of that defense from OG and Bridges. Oh, my gosh, man. And hopefully Deuce was sick the other day. He had uh, flu. There is something going around. So he had a flu or something. And uh, somebody pointed out, I thought Sims might have had it, but somebody pointed out he hurt his ankle. Then I actually looked at the replay and saw where he did hurt his ankle, sprained his ankle. Hopefully he'll be back. Uh, Sunday. I, I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure you'll see Deuce McBride on Sunday and he's going to play a lot of minutes again. So but it's just getting our team rounded into, into, you know, what's what we're going to be, the juggernaut that they're getting ready to become. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody understands Jew deserves a good a home uh, welcome. And then I wanted to put that Tyler Collette stuff to bed because some of y'all are still delusional, man. It, it sounds terrible when you've got a championship team and you're worried about a rookie getting minutes. It's, some of y'all don't realize how dumb that sounds. But anyway, Gordon Hayward would tell you, all right? I put it in the description box. Y'all enjoy your weekend. Um, we should be back Sunday at noon. I'm going to be visiting um, a sick friend in Connecticut. Uh, he has a very bad disease. I'm going to be visiting him, leaving actually today to go see him tomorrow and visiting him uh, this weekend. And so, um, but I do plan on doing the podcast on Sunday. So we'll see. But anyway, y'all please be safe. Uh, hopefully y'all getting cleaned up and recovering from this daggone hurricane that came through. Hopefully nobody else, nobody got hurt, you know, aside from what already happened. Um, But be safe out there. Enjoy your weekend. Shalom.